time. Lucy, tea time. They must have gone wrong. Maggie likes Roy. Come back to the fire, it's drafty out here. If it rains anymore, the river will start rising. We may never find them if it floods. My dear, Stephen is a very capable young man. Yes. So now, will you come away from that gloomy view and see what's happened to my tea? Another hour till dawn, I'd say. It's still raining. Are you cold? I must be. I can feel nothing. Maggie. Oh, Stephen, we talked so. We must. No one can blame you for what's happened. I shall write to Lucy. I'll explain to her how unpardonably I behaved. What's happened can't be put right by a letter. It can never be put right. The whole of St. Ogg's must know by now that we've eloped. Don't you realise what that must have done to your reputation? Two nights alone with me. One night in a rowing boat and another in a broken chair. Should my reputation be ruined for that? However innocent, the gossips would ruin you for far less. Oh, I care nothing for gossip, Stephen. We have to go back and fulfil our engagement. You're raving. Do you really imagine that that's still possible? We love each other, Maggie. Nobody has the right to part us, not even Lucy. Quiet, so you'll wait the whole in. Oh, I don't know how you can sit there and choose and balance in this way. A woman's love must be a miserable thing compared to a man's. I could kill for you. I love you more than anything in the world. It's the first time either of us have loved anyone with our whole heart and soul. How can that be wrong? Maggie, listen to me, listen. We shall take the carriage to York tomorrow, I mean today. From there we'll go to Scotland. Yes, Maggie, yes. Once we're married, nothing can part us. We shall never have to go back. We've both been rescued from a dreadful mistake. I from Lucy and you from Philip. No, no, Stephen. I'm going home and nothing you can say will change my mind. I'm convinced some good can still come of this, but only if we do what's right. Please come back with me, dearest. Lucy. And here, Father. Seems so stupid to be watering plants in this weather. I must ask Stephen to invent a conservatory that has a sieve for a roof instead of glass. Lucy, dear. What is it? I have some news about Stephen and Maggie. Tell me. No, calm yourself, my dear. They're, they're both quite safe. I am calm, Father. They were seen yesterday in Torby. Torby is only a day's coach ride from here. Why aren't they home again? They were seen entering an inn near the quay. Perhaps Maggie was ill and couldn't travel. No, I've made inquiries. The innkeeper said they were both wet and cold, but quite well. They left the inn together. Later they were seen standing beside the coach for York. They've gone to York together? Oh, no, Father, it's only gossip. You know how rumours fly. I am sorry, my dear. The obvious conclusion to draw from the information we have is that Stephen and Maggie have eloped. I refuse to believe that. Lucy, dear. I must... Lucy!
John, don't take on so. You your own now. And when Stephen lost the oars, we simply drifted further and further out into the estuary. Oh, child. You drenched. And then the weather suddenly changed. It got darker and darker and started to rain. We drifted for hours like that, seeing nothing. No lights, no ships. Oh, Maggie, dear. Look at your lovely dress. It's ruined. You and then wet food, And a fishing child. boat nearly rammed us on their way back to Toby. They took us on board, but Stephen had to pay them. What are you doing here? I've come home, Tom. You'll find a home with me. You don't belong here anymore. Tom, how could you? Look at the state she's Be in. quiet, Mother. I came back to the mill because I've nowhere else to go and because I wanted to explain to you what happened. I'm not interested in your explanation. I no longer believe anything you say. You've lied to me from the start, haven't you? That's not true. You used Wakeham as a screen to deceive Lucy, your own cousin and the kindest friend you had. You've ruined her life with your loathsome behaviour. Oh, Tom, you must listen. No, not anymore. You've disgraced us all. You've disgraced our dead father's name. You've been nothing but a curse to your best friends. My God, I'm even sorry for that poor damn crippled work and for the way you've treated him. But Tom, it wasn't Maggie's fault. She knew what she was doing. They both did. Guess deserves to be shot. But you, you're ten times worse than he is. Tom, please. I no longer want you under this roof, Maggie. But this is the only home I have. The very sight of you is hateful to me. Get out of here at once and never come back. I wash my hands of you forever. Where shall I go, Mother? Wherever it is, child, you'll go with me. I will not allow Tom to speak to you like that. I'm your mother, Maggie. Did you think I would just stand by and do nothing? But Tom! Tom can look after himself. You need me more than he does. Where shall we go, Mother? I don't know, dear. We shall try Bob Jakins. His wife will be looking for a lodger now that Tom's left. Oh, poor, poor mother. I've always been such a trial to you, haven't I? Just look at the state your hair's in. Oh, you poor child. It's as wet as it was that day you emptied that vase of water over your head all those years ago. What a naughty scamp you were. Poor little mite. Such a pretty little girl. <laughs> oh, really, Sophie? Have some more tea and be quiet. Has she eaten nothing at all? Oh, very little but liquid. The doctor comes twice a day, but he says there's nothing physically wrong with her. Well, there soon will be if she doesn't eat. <laughs> Jane Glegg. That's Maggie disgraced us all. And poor Lucy dying upstairs. How could you be so hard? Stop snivelling, Sophie. Soggy handkerchiefs do nothing but add to the laundry. And Lucy's very far from dying, you silly creature. She should have married. Who should? Maggie should have married Stephen Guest and stayed away from St Ogg's. There wouldn't have been nearly so much scandal. Nowadays, I hardly dare to set foot in St. Ogg's. Everyone knows, even down to the urchins in the gutter. Why, Mrs. Wool quite cut me at the drapers yesterday. Just turned her back and walked away. Mrs. Wool is an imbecile. And she'd be very ill-advised to try turning her back on me. Do I understand that you approve of Maggie's conduct? I have not yet heard Maggie's explanation of what happened, neighbour Dean. And neither of you. But I have heard from her mother what Maggie told her. And you believed her? Certainly. The girl may be many things I disapprove of, but she's never been a liar. And frankly, I'm disgusted that you can all, including our own brother, admit the worst of her until you're compelled to believe differently. Well, I must say, Jane. Must you, Sophie? 
You certainly have changed your tune. You've never had a good word to say for Maggie, not once in all these years. Because I always felt she was wrong. And she usually was. But in this matter, she's not wrong. If she's as innocent as she declares, and I believe her, then she was right to come home again and face up to the silly, spiteful gossips like Mrs. Wool and Sophie Pullett. Jane Clegg, how could you? Oh, sit down, Sophie. You're creating drafts. Your sister's right, Jane. You should apologise for that remark. I never apologise. Good afternoon, neighbour Dean. Mrs. Clegg, I don't understand you at all. Whatever the rights and wrongs of it, Maggie has brought disgrace to my family. It is just because of our family name that I'll fight tooth and nail for that poor wretched girl. If we can't stand up for our own kin, what are we to stand up for? Don't like the look of it! The dam breaks below Binkham's place, the wheel will never take force of water! Aye, and the bricks are rotten. If the wheel goes, the wall will go with it. Well, at least we can save grain. Start moving sacks to upper level! We've already done that, Mr. Trump. There's not another sack that has been able to take it for their break. They're as rotten as the bricks. I've told Mr. Jetson so many times. Then there's nothing to be done but pray. I'll close the door and leave you in peace, Prissy. In peace, miss? Good evening, Maggie. Have I come at an inconvenient time? I thought you'd gone away. They told me you'd left the country. Why'd you come in? You don't seem very pleased to see me. Why have you come for me? Is it to revile me like the rest of St Ox? It's very cruel of you to say such a thing. For you it would be justified. No, never. I have nothing to reproach you with. You and Lucy have everything to reproach me with. I've just come from Lucy. How is she? Is she better? Much improved. She's received a letter from Stephen Guest. Maggie, I know you wish me to leave because my presence only reminds you of what has happened when you're doing your best to forget. But I shall not leave until I've said my piece. My love and respect for you has not altered one jot, Maggie. Indeed, I think it has grown stronger. I've come no, to... Philip, I beg you not to. You're going to forgive me and there's nothing I deserve less. Wrong. I've come to ask you to forgive me. Please, can we sit? I've known all along that you never meant to deceive me. And yet I could not bring myself to see you for fear of a rebuff. I was thinking only of myself, you see. And then I heard there were certain people in St. Augustine who will not be satisfied with the truth. They'd much prefer to think the worst of you so that they can continue their vicious, insulting behaviour. That much is true. That I'm prepared to put up with the staring and the finger-pointing. What I couldn't know was the thought of you and Lucy so unhappy. Lucy feels as I do, my dear. She's received a letter from Stephen Guest from Holland completely vindicating you. But she loved him so. Right. Maggie, when things have settled down, and I've no, I've, no, I've no right to intrude upon your relationship or your feelings for Steve, for others. Perhaps one day you and I could be friends again. I, I, if I thought there was any hope, and I know I've no right to expect anything but affection from you. Um, what I mean to say, dearest, is that you are the blessing of my life. And that whatever the future may hold for us both, I am unchangeably yours. And will stand by you as a friend until the day I die. I have a strong feeling that from now on things will do nothing but improve for us both. Yes. Yes, I feel that too. If only it would stop raining. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mother! How long have you been here? Only a few minutes, dear. Your Uncle Dean's groom brought me in the gig. Have you come to stay? No, dear. You'll be calling for me very soon. Hmm. And I'm late as it is. There's talk of terrible flooding, you know. And they say the floss has risen three feet since Thursday. Well, now, come on, Mother. What is all this? You haven't made a special trip just to talk about the weather? Hey, is everything all right for you at Uncle Dean's? Oh, yes, yes. Everything's fine. I'm worried about you, dear. 
Will you be all right here? The house sits so low by the water. I'll be all right. Wherever did you find this? Oh, Luke found it in the old barn. It's Maggie's dear old doll. Poor thing. How she used to ill-treat you. Hardly a day went by when she wasn't banging your head or twisting your arm. Well, there. It's nothing but a lump of wood. Are you so set against your own sister that you can't even bear to hear her name mentioned? Yeah, so that's it. Well, if you come here to plead on Maggie's behalf, you're going to leave disappointed. It's cruel of you, Tom, to treat her like this. Why must you be so unforgiving? She's confused and troubled. And your hardness is making her very unhappy. I suppose this is her doing. She sent you here to talk to me. She did nothing of the sort. You should know Maggie better than that. I came because I can't bear to see the poor child so miserable. You are. Well, she brought it on herself. Lucy is the one who has harmed the most. And she has forgiven Maggie. So why must you prolong this unhappiness? I don't want to talk about it. Then I will talk to you and you will listen. Are you so determined to be as vindictive and obstinate as your poor father? He ruined his life, Tom, and ours with his quick temper and his unforgiving nature. And now you seem set on going the same way. Have you learnt nothing from the hardships he reduced us to? You can talk about our father like that. I loved him very much. And I miss him more than I thought possible. Oh, Mother, don't. Oh, Tom, dear, please. For your mother's sake. I beg of you, make it up with Maggie. She's been punished enough, God knows. Oh, go to her, Tom. Please. I've a great deal on my mind at the moment. This is not the time to discuss it. I'll not keep you from your work. Mother! Mother! No problem, wood. Maggie, Maggie. Turning now, Luke. The pressure of water might break the sluice and tear the old damn thing out of the wall. Here, hold this. Not now, Mr. Tom. Wait for daylight. There's no time. Come on, Mr. Tom. Suppose sluice goes. Look at them up to the right. Can't see.
thinking. Catch hold of us there if you can. It's Luke, Bob. From Dorcut Mill. It's good to see you, Mr. Lodz. Is your family all right? Ah, uh, they're safe enough now. Well, I grab. But have you seen Miss Maggie? Maggie, I thought you were lodging with you. Ah, well, she roused us when the flood came. Then took me second boat and went off on her own before I could stop her. I reckon she come for Mr. Tom at the mill. The mill's gone, Bob. So is Mr. Tom. The mill's gone, Maggie. The will gave way and brought the old building down. And the men? I don't know. At least one's drowned. It was clinging to the same log and... Thank God you're safe. Where are we? We must reach high ground. There's old trees coming down in the flood. The boat could be turned over any moment. Will I stay? I'll go. What is it? Forgive me, Maggie. Mine. 